Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. It works. No technical issues. Yay! And my, my background is up. I'm so excited. Yeah, this is great. Is this? <laughs> I, I, I uh, didn't get an opportunity to watch the interview you did with Timothy. So. Oh, with Timothy. Yeah, we talked smack about you. Good, good. No, um, I'm teasing. Did, you, <laughs> did you have the same background and everything? No, with Timothy, I recorded with um, OBS. This okay. was back in August when I think it was August or early September when they were here and it was OBS. And I thought about doing that, but I, I did a, um, a podcasty type of recording with my son and my cousin a few days ago, and he did it through OBS, but I had to crop out, you know, the sidebar of OBS and mm -hmm. then it zoomed in on us. And to, it, to me, I didn't think that it looked the best quality. So I told Arturo, let's just go ahead and get StreamYard because we're going to share it because mm -hmm. he has his channel. So that's what we're that's what we did. OK, so well, I see the record only so huh? far. StreamYard has been the easiest thing I've used. It has been, hasn't it? Did you do Shimmer's interview in mm -hmm. StreamYard with the record? Yep. It's such a great feature, isn't it? Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it's really great. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm glad I'm anyway. glad it's there because OBS is a pain in the fucking ass. It's really versatile, and I, I continue to use that for my, um, you know, for, for my reaction videos and stuff, mm -hmm. but it's, it's very, it's CPU intensive when you have a lot going on, and it can overheat your computer if you're not careful, especially if it needs to be cleaned out and everything, so. Yeah. Anyway, oh, it's super me, simple. Let me see if I can get a You're, you're all professional looking. You got your, and your booth and everything. Like you, I was like, I wonder if he's going to be out on his porch or in his living room. It's going to be yeah. all echoey and reverbery and everything. No, 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 no. This is an interview. This is for your channel. Oh, we're, we're being all professional. Yeah. yeah. I'll say to you what I said to my brother is I'm not the best interviewer. I don't really have a nice list of prepared questions to ask. I figured it'd be kind of like the whole theme of my channel. And he walks away. Are your your uh, headphones are wireless? Yep. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I was just, you know, like the like the theme of my channel, just a discussion talking about right. audiobooks, how you got into it. I've I mean, I've heard the story multiple times, but right, right. you know, obviously people in the audience haven't. So I guess we'll start with that. Okay. Cool. Oh, it's already it's already recording. I have started recording since I was Great. waiting for you. Awesome. All right. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the question is, how did I get into audiobooks? Mm -hmm. um, well, it was uh, definitely by accident. Um, I didn't seek out audiobooks when I first started my voiceover career. In fact, my voiceover career started as sort of an accident as well. Uh, I was, um, at the time... When I first started doing voiceover stuff, I was just looking for anything to do. Anything, um, yeah. I, I, I had just been laid off from uh, working for my folks, who they they owned this rental property business, but then um, they decided to sell it. And so ah. when they decided to sell it, I didn't have employment anymore. I was supposed to be kind of like training to take over their business, but. I they guess wanted... I didn't realize that, that yeah. they had, that they, unless it was in one of your other interviews and I just didn't, it didn't click. I thought you just kind of decided you didn't want to take over the business. And so you set out doing yeah. other. So I had already uh, decided I didn't want to take over the business. Yeah. But also had decided that it was probably my best option. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, right. You know, they, they Faith. have this. Yeah, it's it's safe. It's a business I know, and it's already set up, you know. And there's, as a son, you know, it's there's always that part of me that wants to honor the legacy of my folks, you know, okay. the, the things that they do. But the the fact that they decided um, to to sell just kind of took the took it out of my hands, you know. Right, made it uh, easier. Yeah, I could, well, you know, I could, I couldn't, I couldn't just depend on that. And yeah. at the time when it happened, I, I was excited, you know, I, I was happy about it because, you know, you, you would have, I had been investing a lot of time into making it my career, but none of that 
felt bad. You know, I didn't feel mm-hmm. like that was a waste or anything. I just felt like, okay, well, this is no longer an option. That means I have to, I have to risk it and do what I can. Um, I didn't want to, I didn't want a, a job job. Uh, right. I wanted to do things creative for a mm-hmm. living um, and being independent, having, having already accumulated audio gear and video gear from all the different odd jobs that I've been trying to do. And from, from being a musician, um, you know, I, I went to school for music composition and dropped out and started a band and, you know, made a few albums with, with my band and we all produced it on our own. So I already had gear. I already had experience. So I just said after trying, you know, that and video editing and yeah, yeah. Um, You can actually still find some of the, the videos that I edited together. If you look up cage side TV on YouTube, Okay, I'm gonna have to check that out. Cage yeah, Side um, TV? yeah, Cage Side TV. We would we would go to these smokers, which for anyone who doesn't know, this is lingo for for like the lowest level of amateur MMA. Oh, I was because I I had yeah. no clue. I was going to yeah. ask you what the heck did that mean? Yeah, that's what a smoker okay. is. Uh, okay, you, and they were they would be out in these you know little towns in uh, a little bit south of Kansas City. You know, an hour or two south of kansas city we'd go to these places when my buddy mike and i would we would record the fights we had three or four different camera angles um they were all hd and and uh we we captured all all the fights we Uh edited them together and we looked made them look all professional with Uh graphics and and everything it was it was so much fun the fights were atrocious because they were all you know everyone was like it's not just amateur amateur MMA people. It's like amateur MMA people in the sticks, you know, <laughs> where like you're lucky to find any kind of MMA gym. I mean, right. like, like yeah. if you have ever watched the show Cobra Kai, like I that is not yet, but I've been okay. meaning to. Anyone who's seen that show, just imagine that kind of dojo, just worse even than that. Like just people who just don't know what the hell they're doing. Do they, they even have, have a cage? Yeah, they had a cage. Oh, it's just uh, but, but, okay. you know, it's like the fighters themselves are just dumb kids who like to scrap. Yeah. Um, and it was fun. It was a lot of fun, but there was no money in it, clearly. Oh. You know, um, I we even tried to, you know, we took our videos to some of the actual bigger organizations in Kansas yeah. City, and they were impressed with the work, but at the same time, they're like, But we don't have any money, oh. you know. So um oh, it sucks. I, that was just, you know, that was a business venture that I tried and it just didn't work. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot of fun and, and I had to use my creative side and that was what I was really looking for. Um, so, you know, again, tried some things, finally got into voiceover, started, I got on voices.com. I auditioned mm-hmm. for a million jobs a yeah. week and landed like three, you know, every Spent week. So much time auditioning, I'm sure. Yeah. And I, uh, I landed a few, you know, just enough to keep the lights on, um, for a few months. Um, but then I found an audiobook job that really paid well. Um, and it wasn't even through ACX. It was, it was, uh, this one company I've, gosh, it's so long ago. I can't even remember what they're called now. Um, was it through voices? you picked it up from it voices. through voices.com mm-hmm. and they wanted, they wanted a narration of, Freak the Mighty. Um, geez, what's the name of the author? It's kind of a it's kind of a classic 90s middle school age kind of coming of age story about this kid who has a le- learning disorder who uh, makes friends with a kid with cerebral palsy. I, I think that's what it is. Okay. It's it's that disease where it, you know it kind of destroys your nervous system. Right. And, yeah. You know they kind of become you know vegetables Mm -hmm. physically but their brains you know are still working they become friends and like they become freak the mighty uh the the big learning disorder kid puts the puts the cerebral palsy kid on his shoulders and they go out and do adventures and stuff okay um but that was my first audiobook and it was a lot of fun i i learned to be you know director narrator all the characters you know casting director of course um producer I, I i had to do all of it yeah and at the time i still just had a closet with uh w- w- you know with just a pole for hanging clothes on 
Uh-huh. I had a bunch of hangers on it, and I put I put a uh, a comforter over these uh, these clothes hangers, and oh. it made a little fort inside my little ass closet. So I could only narrate for twenty minutes at a time, tops, before yeah. I was you know oh, suffocating to death. Yeah, and, yeah. And, um, getting all of my equipment disgusting and sweaty. So that that took me a while, but it was still way better pay for the amount of work I was doing and way more creativity uh, per amount of work than I've done in all my other VO jobs. So Mm -hmm. I kept looking for audiobook jobs and I kept landing them. And they're easier to land because less people audition for them because... um, This was still not ACX yet, right? Yeah, it's still still not ACX. Um, Okay. This is still just voices.com. I didn't know anything about ACX, but it was much easier to land those jobs because... In general, voice actors are looking for shorter jobs where they just have one specialization. It's much easier. Um, You know, you get paid better per the amount of work, Mm -hmm. but, you know, you don't have to audition as much. That's still a lot of work that I don't have to do. Right. So it it balanced out and it was more fulfilling. Uh, Then I found out about ACX. Then I found out about royalty share. And the cogs just started spinning. You know, I, I was like, okay, so we have a system here. We have a way to ramp or to, to ramp up, right? All I have to do is make sure I'm the best I can possibly be and uh, make audiobooks that I would actually listen to, mm-hmm. um, which, you know, at the time I had only listened to a few audiobooks and I didn't like them. Uh, I liked the nonfiction ones, but didn't like the fiction ones because I didn't care what they were saying. I, I, you know, it's, it's just someone telling me a story. I don't care. I don't care. You, you just didn't like fiction or you just didn't like the way they did. the fiction? I didn't like listening to fiction delivered by an audiobook narrator. Uh, your typical audiobook. Right. Narrator. Because, because it, it didn't feel like. You were immersed. You weren't. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, you have to grab my attention. This is entertainment. Right. If it's fiction, it's entertainment. I have no good reason to care about what you're saying unless you're tricking me. That's what, that's what all entertainment is about. That's what right. all fiction is about. It's, it's nonsense until a good storyteller pulls you in and makes you believe it's not nonsense, even though you should always keep in mind that it is, right? right. That's, that's the, right. That is yeah, the yeah. magic of, of putting on a show is, mm-hmm. is just for a moment, you're, you're tricking everyone who's watching or listening that what is going on is real. It's actually happening. And that's the only way you can get their investment. Um, so that's what I try to do. I tried to trick myself into believing that what I was, what I was listening to, which was the audiobook that I made was an actual story, an actual event that happened. I wanted to believe the characters. I wanted to believe that the narrator was talking about something they care about me, right? The narrator, they, right. Me, whatever. Yeah, um, and that's just been my philosophy philosophy this whole time um this whole seven almost eight years now oh yeah it's crazy it's been... it is crazy it is crazy see yeah wow that's right because you'd been doing it about three to four years whenever i mm-hmm. first discovered you and i told mm-hmm. the story about that in the interview with tim so yeah. um when did you um first hear a graphic audio audiobook and did that Mm. I mean did that sort of change your mind about fiction audiobooks or did you start to sort of get into them depending on the narrator before that yeah I discovered graphic audio and I'm sure that I encountered it peripherally I Mm -hmm. I, I mean when I quote-unquote discovered graphic audio or when I bothered to look into them I had already seen the brand name it it had already been in my my subconscious you know right yeah and so i finally was like oh that's what this is Mm -hmm. um and graphic audio i mean i'm not saying that i've listened to a lot of their stuff i've listened to maybe four or five of their productions and um i quite enjoyed a lot of it and uh i was really inspired by them honestly as little of their work that that i actually consumed i saw what they were doing i saw that they were independent that they were 
they just had their own thing going on. Um, they had their own, their own following. They had their own distribution network, um, mm-hmm. you know, across gas stations across the country, you know, selling to truckers. Like that's, yeah. that's brilliant. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and another thing that really inspired me was looking at their, their credits. I saw that a lot of the same people's names were showing up in each production and there was okay. like 20 or 30 names on each production. And I, you know, looking up all these people, they're all musicians. They're all, and and they're all actors, you know, mm-hmm. and I got the sense, okay, I, I kind of get this now. It's almost like this big troop of actors and musicians right, and artists yeah. who got, who get together mm-hmm. and do these things, you know, and that's, that's just what they do, you know, and, and they're almost in their own vacuum. They're in their own bubble, just just serving this audience um and apparently making money because if you listen to their productions over the years they all they it just keeps improving yeah you know um so yeah i mean i don't know when i when it was exactly in my audiobook narrating career that i actually discovered them and investigated them but that was probably subconsciously the thing that made me th- that helped me believe that something like sound booth theater could exist. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, I mean, that's not to say that clicked and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this thing. Yeah. Right. It, it, it just, it just stopped me from saying no to the idea whenever okay. I would think of it. Right. You know, like the, their example, them setting the example, this can be done made sound like any time I thought about and, and these are little steps right every little step I took in expanding sound booth theater never was it towards a specific I want this company to be to reach this particular landmark or something yeah it was just it was just step by step hey that An sounds evolution like a good idea. yeah hey that sounds like a good idea and and this company I may have started it, but everything that has happened has been a result of things, opportunities emerging and me just choosing them. All right. You know, as I go. Um, but it's I guess it's always just directed by. By my core desire to have to have a troop, to have a troop of actors to to be. um You've got a troop now. Yeah, exactly. You know, like to it's it's like a band, you know, like <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that, that's what Ahmed said. And I, I think that really rings true. The way that this company operates is more like a band than a company. You know, we all yeah. like we we have gotten used to each other. We know each other like we we all get along well. Um, we all have similar interests, but are very diverse at the same time. You know, yeah. we have like yeah. a common string of interests, but like there i i wouldn't even say there's a way to identify a click within our company or or you know I- anything like that even you know we have engineers and the proofers and the actors and the administration but they're all interwoven right and everybody's everybody's got lots of skills that cross over to each other's mm-hmm. realms um so we all we all kind of it's it's just this really organic ugh, sorry I, i'm like I, I have I have issues with 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 the word organic. Well, no, it's 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 like it's like um, corporate or or new business buzzwords. You oh, know, like see, I didn't even know, like, know that we when when yeah. I was talking about Lost Boys the other day with with my son and I mean with Arturo and and my co- my cousin Corey, um, we were talking we were using that term a lot to describe vampire movies that felt kind of like real and and Lost mm. Boys came across as one of them just because of the family mm-hmm. themes it dealt with. And also Kronos. I don't know if you've ever heard of that movie by Guillermo del Toro. No, I still haven't. No, I haven't seen that. No. And, and, and I, I use that word to describe it. So then you threw it out there, but then you cringed. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't know it was a corporate buzzword. Yeah. I, because I'm, I'm not I, really in touch with that sort of thing anyway. So. Yeah. You're lucky. <laughs> I, I just, I don't know. I, I, I kind of, it, it, anything that reminds me of that makes me cringe but i i use the word uh, i use the word in good faith i meant i meant that it was that it really does feel like the connections that we make and the roles that we've all yeah. found ourselves in 
it was it it felt right and natural right and yeah and happy. that's that's the way that's the way I took it I didn't yeah. take it any other way than that so um at some point you ended up in LA mm -hmm. and yep. you were already involved in audiobooks at that point yeah yeah so that was a, that was just a little brief detour in my life um <laughs> you know as far as as far as what it did for my career i would say nothing like yeah. i i didn't I didn't accomplish any real career goals while I was out there. Yeah. Um, it was more, it was more of a life detour and kind of a way for me to confirm with myself what my path should be. Okay. Um, I went to LA thinking, you know, Hey, maybe I can get some better voice work, some other voice work, some stuff that's not audiobooks because at the time sound booth theater wasn't a thing. Uh, well, right. I no, just, it, it kind of was. It well, kind of was like Sound Booth Theater, the YouTube channel, right? Sound Booth Theater, the idea to narrate live with an with streaming with an audience, like that. You did is, that even before? Like I thought it was called Fiat Celebrity or something like that. Um, no. Well, your, maybe that was your, my YouTube channel at the time. Yeah. Fiat Media. Um, or something but, like that. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, Sound Booth Theater, the show is kind of what spawned that's what spawned the name of the company and that was right when that you was when I, yeah when i first started yeah, yeah it, when i first started it was with um william aaron's uh other life dreams right and you were on periscope at the time and i was on periscope and, and you would narrate live yep yeah um and i eventually named it and i started doing it live and i'm pretty I, maybe i did maybe i did start that before i went to la i don't remember now well well, um, when I had had uh, or when Timothy had talked to you about doing his book, you you were on Periscope at that point and you and I remember tuning in and you were narrating one of William's books. Mm -hmm. And I tuned in because I was all excited. You know, you're going to do Timothy's book and I wanted to tune in and, and listen and, and support what you were doing and everything. And you were on Periscope. I remember that. And mm -hmm. then I at some point. Oh, and by the time you started working on Timothy's, I think you were on YouTube at that point. Okay. And that was just a really close time span because you started hit, you know, your turnaround time was quite a bit quicker than it is now because it wasn't so much involved. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, I remember that. That was like uh, in the fall of 2016. I, I think then I would have, I, it would have been right after I got back from LA. Yeah, because um, you were in Can you were in Kansas City by the time when when we first became acquainted with each other. You were yeah, okay. Already, All right, so Kansas yeah, City. L.A. L.A. was was before the time that we hung out. So yeah, um, then L.A. for me was kind of like okay, I I got to the town. It's nice, super nice, right? Like the weather's amazing and oh well, yeah, there's that. Do, you know, and I just want to like here's the thing. I couldn't. I, it was hard to work because I just wanted to go outside and, and have fun. And, yeah, yeah, and uh, it's not it's, it's not as if I had a shortage of work, and I was lucky. I moved in with a fellow narrator uh, named Ian Walker. Oh, okay. He, yeah, he uh, had yeah, a yeah. He, Ian. he he had just lost a roommate. He needed a new one. He's he already had a booth in his house. So I was like, "Fuck it, I'm I'm just gonna go." Just oh, gonna was go. that where you recorded Anonymous Source? Because I yes. asked you if. There was a scene where the characters were jogging mm -hmm. and I could tell that you were physically acting it out. And I remember asking you, did you do that jogging in that little closet? of Because yeah. you were still in like a little closet in Kansas City when you went back. Right. And you right. said, no, I was in a friend's booth because you had right. space to, well, to do it, your jogging. I mean, technically, it was still a closet. It was just a much bigger closet. Was it? OK, when you say booth. Yeah. Okay, like yeah. we use booth interchangeably as narrators, right? right. A booth can be a yeah. closet. Mine was yep. a little thing under the stairs. You know? right, right, I yeah. kept calling myself Harry Potter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so did he have an actual booth booth or a booth? It, it was a closet and it was treated. Oh, okay. And, and, and okay. it, was decent for the, yeah. it was decent for me at the time. You mm -hmm. know? Uh, it was a vast improvement to the closet I was in right. when I came back to Kansas City. Um, but that didn't last long. Uh, when When I got back to Kansas City, I was like, uh, uh you know this, yeah. this can no longer do so i did i maybe did a couple more books in that while i was shopped for a for a new booth 
And then I found the booth that Annie has now. Right. Uh, used. So the the studio bricks. Yes, the studio bricks. Um so yes, but when I got out to LA, it it was fun. But that's kind of all it was. If I wanted to have a bigger voiceover career, if I wanted a career as an actor or to do anything else in entertainment, if I was living in L.A. and I wanted to actually make money, mm. the only way for me to have done that it would, would have been to join the union. And it's a 100% yeah. a union town. And yep. me, me just being who I am, I don't I, I don't want I don't want to. I don't I don't want to join a big political organization. Yeah. And I um, don't blame you. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and like I, I don't know, I don't know the people at the union. I've never met them. Um, but I just it's just it just doesn't sit well with me to be associated with a political entity. Um well, so it, it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't matter who's running it, it wouldn't matter right. what they're doing. I just the thing is, if I'm with them, then the message is what it is. And if I don't, if I don't go along with the message, then what's what's going to happen to my jobs? You know, like I just. Well, uh, they're, uh, they're too so confining you. and controlling. So I like, I was trying to find some people to help Aurelia mm -hmm. because her original plan, she, she had this original plan for these two VAs to do some voices for her for her work. Um, and one of them worked out just fine. The other one did not. So then I didn't have the heart to tell her. So I went looking for some VAs that I was aware of. Mm -hmm. And I, one of the people that I contacted was the voice for Shadow the Hedgehog. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. He absolutely loves that character. Mm -hmm. And he was interested, but his union rules said he couldn't. Mm -hmm. So I was like, ah! <laughs> I was yeah. happy to surprise her, you know, with this nice gift of that dang union. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> I, I just, I don't, I don't understand the rules. I don't want to, I don't want to get entangled in anything. Yeah. You no, know, yeah. I don't want to be your I, own agent. Yeah. Right. Like I, that's, that's, I would prefer an agent, you know, cause at least I know the agent is working for me. Right. You know, but, but I, you know, you know what I meant? Like I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. But with, 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 with the union, it's like, I have this, this boss. Hmm. You know, and controlling that, your actions. Yeah, that I thought that that was what that was the opposite of what I wanted. I don't I don't want a boss. I don't want I want to control my own fate and I want my career to turn out how I can make it turn out. Right. And, you know, if I don't get special favors from a certain group, OK, you know, I'm just mm -hmm. going to do my best to uh, rely on my skills and my um my ability to sell my skills, I guess, to whoever, whoever's interested. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, that's why I, LA just, I just wasn't willing to do what needed to be done in LA in order for LA to work for me. Yeah. How so, long were you there? 10 months, I think 10 months. Less than a year. Okay. Yeah. And so, so I, I came back home and, oh man, it was, it was great. Like I, I expected to get home and, and regret coming home. Uh -huh. Be like, ah, man, you were out in L.A. It was so nice out there. Yeah, oh, it felt so good. It felt oh, so good to come back to I Kansas bet. City. Yeah. Um, you know, it was nice to not have a, like, I was paying nine hundred something dollars a month to live in a two bedroom townhome with two other guys. So. And they were contributing there. Yeah. Wow. And so, yeah, like, it's crazy that's, expensive. That's so expensive there. for what little amount of space yeah. I had. You know. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't it wasn't worth it yeah whereas come home to kansas city i i still owned a house i still owned the house yeah. i was living in in kansas city and someone else was living in it i was renting it out so when mm -hmm. i came back home i had a, a place to stay right and it was already paid off mm -hmm. so didn't. i have taxes and insurance in kansas city you know like the the difference in probably not too there. yeah compared yeah, to la yeah. yeah um so yeah and plus I'm back in my hometown. You know, I I love I love Kansas City. I love my hometown. Born and raised here. One thing I can say, there's not much wrong with it. Really? You know, uh it really. I mean it's I mean I've I've never I don't like to me, Kansas City doesn't have this the same sort of negative connotation that LA, New York City. That's right. You know, which I, I've made it no secret in, in my videos that I am not a fan. 
Although, just because it's just way too many people. So like Kansas City comes across to me, similar to where I'm from, like as there's, there's enough people to where there's, you, you don't lack anything as far as mm-hmm. stuff to do, places mm-hmm. to go to and things like that. But it's not so much that it's just, you feel it's just an oppressive clump of bodies around you all the time. Exactly. exactly. So, it's, it, to me, it's, you know, it's, it's in that Goldilocks zone where yeah, the, that's a the, good, yeah. the, uh, mm-hmm. the city is just big enough to be fun. Yeah. Um, and the the places where people live are separate from the city and it's like in nice houses that yeah. don't cost seven bazillion dollars to buy and you and have some breathing room like you're yeah, not on top room. of each other it's so. very spread out there's all sorts of different locations yeah you have to have a car if you live here yeah um, well. but you know the the traffic is like if compared compared to a place like la or new york the traffic is amazing yeah it's like it's right like there's actual you can actually see the street you know um, <laughs> kind of parking lot every day yeah um so uh, as far as the coasts are concerned they have so much uh historical impact historical significance mm. there it, it is it is a glamorous and awe-inspiring thing to be in the presence of those cities, to be in those cities and like to kind of just look at the architecture and imagine what kind of history has, has gone through those places and how many big things have happened. I mean, like as much as I, as much as I personally don't like being in those places, um, I have to give credit where it's due. That's where most of the big stuff has happened. Yeah. Uh, in the United States, so all the biggest innovations, all the best, all the biggest entertainment companies. This is, you know, this is where business is done on these coasts. Yeah. It's, I mean, um, tip, it's kind of typical for a place where there's yeah. a huge right. mass of right. people. But also, what that means is there is a giant concentration of power in both of those yeah. areas. And that means you get the biggest assholes. Exactly. buying for that power right? right like the biggest most effective assholes right. swarm to the coasts mm-hmm. and that's the, those are the places they want to control yeah right those are the places where they where they you know that's where they get the most status right that's where they get the most um well they're clout. noticed more for sure you know, they're where, nationwide where be, they're noticed more yeah yeah so i mean if that's what you want that's where you got, that's where you got to be. If you want attention, if you want to be seen as the best of the best and, you know, be a shining star and all that stuff, do it, go to the coast, mm-hmm. you know, fall on your, fall on your face. Hopefully you'll succeed. You, you know, you'll get your 1% chance, right. Of, yeah. of making it out there. Hopefully you're, you're uh, talented enough and smart enough and lucky enough and sociable enough to, to make, to make it in those yeah, industries. Not for everybody. But that's true. Why, why, why I like the Midwest is because it's chill, man. Yeah, people are trying to people are trying to carve a way of life for themselves and be left alone more. Right. You know, they're not like and and community feels more genuine here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. Um, There's not so much hustle and bustle, which, again, like like pros and cons, right? You're not going to get as much epic shit done here. But it's a place where you can build your own. You're going to, you can, you have room to build your own thing. I mean, some theater happened there. So, yeah. I mean, technically, technically, this is the home base. But the thing about Sound Booth Theater is everyone in the company lives everywhere. That's the beauty of the internet. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We got Lori in Atlanta. We got Justin in Toronto. We got four people in New York Will, Dory, Emily. Uh, Well, I'm in it. Is he New York? New Jersey, Jersey? New Jersey. But yeah. he's kind of like sort of in that area. And Dory. Dory Dory is in New York, yes. Yeah. Um, and Annie's in Tulsa. I'm here in KC. We have we have somebody on the West Coast now, don't we? Wait a second. Gary's in Texas. Oh, he's in Texas? Why did yeah, I think Gary's... he was like in Arizona or New Mexico Denton. or something? Denton, Texas. Yep. Oh, he's a Texan. He mm-hmm. he's a He's a, he's a um, now. 
Wait, wait. An he, Irish Texan. Yeah, I was going to say he's an Irish Texan, but I was like, wait a second, is he Scottish? No, he's Irish. Okay. <laughs> yep. I don't know of anybody in Cali, though, or, or on the West Coast. Mike might be. The, the new the new engineer, Mike? Oh, he oh yeah, he's so yesterday. new. It did, yeah. He hasn't cemented himself in my head, so. Yeah, and maybe yeah. Richard? No, Richard's in New York, too, isn't he? Well, he was. He moved, but did he move mm. to Pennsylvania or Ohio or something like that? I don't remember. Now. Uh, uh, also, Nick Nick Shoup, he's on the West Coast. He's in. Oh, uh, is he? He's in close to Seattle, I believe. Oh, okay, yeah. I didn't I didn't realize where and when uh, and um, is what's Seattle his name? or Portland? I can I can never remember. I always get those two cities mixed up. <laughs> um. Where's Aaron from? Right. Is he also Tulsa? Who? Aaron? Yes, Aaron. Yes, Aaron is also Tulsa. Tulsa. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Well, you you um, were the one that kind of, you know, it was your instinct about the different people you came across that mm -hmm. prompted you to pull certain people into your little sound booth theater circle. Mm -hmm. You just had a certain intuition about them and most of the time i think it paid off pretty well yeah, I, I think so too we've been very lucky about everybody that we've chosen yeah. in our crew you know there's been some people who haven't worked out and yeah that's that's, that's gonna yeah. happen no matter yeah. what right uh i feel like we have a really good ratio oh yeah um, and the the team that we're with right now i'm very happy with um and like I said before, everyone just kind of found their spot. And I don't think that's anything to do with, with uh, my leadership skills or anything like that, or my, definitely not my organization skills. Well, um, <laughs> well, but I mean, just your ability to analyze what you think somebody might be good at doing mm. might be a good fit. Yeah. Um, it's, I, I can't say I have a method, you know, I just listen to someone perform. And if not enough red flags show up because they're always <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you something. Red flags are always showing up on everybody for me as a listener now. Um, just because really? my, my ear is just fine tuned and I'm picky and I just, well, everyone has red flags, but the least red flags when I'm seeing like, right. You know, just a blip here and there that's when i'm like oh well okay, maybe we can work with this person being an audiobook narrator kind of does that to you it's kind yeah. of like how because i had narrated some books mostly nonfiction. i now hear every little thing in a professional's voice that i wouldn't have heard before like now if, when i listen to i don't know let's say scott brick i'm just mm -hmm. throwing out a name there i hear the nasal stuff i hear the mouth clicks you know it, it's Granted, it's pretty rare on someone like him because he's such a pro and they probably treat the audio really well. But what I'm mm -hmm. saying is you notice stuff like that. Yep. Yep. Because you've done it. Yeah. And you've listened to it yourself. Right. And, <laughs> and it, it stuff like that does catch my attention, but not as much as performance stuff. Performance stuff is uh, okay. really what I'm looking for. Um, I think if we're if we're just talking about actors, uh, what I look for is character work, you know? Yeah. I think that's so much more important than narration um, pound for pound, right? Like, of course, narration takes up the vast majority of any audiobook, And that's a special um, skill set, too, because not. Everybody yeah, it can... is. A, it is a special skill set. But I think. I think. Unsatisfactory narration takes me out of a, an audiobook way less than bad characters really yeah because because the story is happening to the characters mm -hmm. right yeah yeah so if if i can if i can just let my brain autopilot and let the narrator be a voice that's just telling me what's going on it's the characters, the characters that can you're, sell you're me on. Onto more yeah yeah right like right. if i believe that these things are happening to these characters I can forgive what quibbles I have with the narration. With the narration. Story. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that, delivery or anything like that. That makes sense. Um, yeah. But also that's what, that's the strength that I think that I want sound booth theater 
to be displaying is character work. And mm -hmm. that's, again, what I think is going to pull people in. It's, it's, it's like, very rarely do you hear anyone talking, like, let's even look at movies, right? What do you, what are you more likely to see someone talking about online? The directing, the, the film, the cinematography, the score, the sound effects, or the actors, or the actors, mm -hmm. right? Everyone's talking about the actors. Everyone's talking about characters, characters that they love in in the stories. Those those are the things that generate conversation. Yeah, it's what people are interested in talking about. So, I figure then it shouldn't. It probably isn't going to be different with any kind of storytelling medium we need the characters to pop we need people to fall in love with the characters or yeah. at, at least stay interested in following them around well i guess because um i don't serve in a performance capacity that wasn't anything you had to analyze with me thank goodness because i'm not an actor <laughs> You could be. I'm just, I'm just, you know, nonfiction is my thing. That's why I say whenever Sound Booth Theater gets a nonfiction book, I'll do it. <laughs> I, I would love, I would love it if we, we were able to do that. But one thing that, that it's yeah. just nonfiction is so different. It is. I feel like we yeah. need to do like four or five at a time and be like, okay, we have a new imprint well. and then have five random nonfiction books. And, and another problem with nonfiction for me as a publisher is now suddenly I give way more of a shit about the content. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like, yeah. I don't want to be publishing, you know, memoirs of a clan clansman or something. Well, yeah, you know, exactly. Like, like <laughs> you know, m maybe I would if it was like a clinical study of a guy, of a guy's memoir and talking about his psychology uh -huh. and what, how, how one might become a clansman or something, you know, yeah. but I don't want to, I don't want to release something. I don't, I don't want to release something that has a, a leaning, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, oh, I'm part of the clan and it's okay. Right. Like, I don't yeah, want to no, no, I I publish anything like that or any kind of any, anything from the opposite end either. You know, like yeah. I don't, I don't want to be politically active. With yeah. My well, no, and, no. and I, the world, like the world as it is right now, everything yeah, I know. It it's so I mean, it's it's bad enough that fiction is politicized, right? Uh, yes. But but everywhere but you look, the nonfiction stuff is like, like I just don't want to touch it, dude. I don't. I don't want to. Uh, science stuff. I would love to do. You know. Um, I mean, not all nonfiction is is geared that way, though. I mean, I'm not yeah. really interested in nonfiction that's like that either. But not. we're we're sane individuals, and when we <laughs> read nonfiction, we don't we don't. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> we don't try and find weird implications or yeah, yeah. We, we're, we're not searching for a way for the author to implicate themselves into some, yeah. into some fascistic conspiracy or something. Right. We're not, that's not what we're, we're trying to learn something. Right. Yeah. We, well, we weigh our own opinions against what's being said and then we make a judgment and then we go off and tell whoever might be interested hey you should read this all right you know it, it's it, it, the world is not the same right now and i i, I want it to calm down a little bit before we oh, jump into nonfiction. whatever i don't i don't have good i don't have good feelings for the immediate future uh as far as that goes but what i was thinking also was like if some of our more well-known authors that we do work for you know if they would publish a book about how to world build or how to yeah you know, write a novel and you hey, know, how to plot a novel stuff like that i think i think that would be really interesting that's the I kind had, of stuff i like i had never even considered that but that oh. is actually a great idea maybe maybe we should uh maybe we should see if some of our authors are attempting something like that yeah i don't know I would why totally be down to publish you know an, an i should have mentioned or something like that you know? i should have mentioned that before but that was just kind of the thing i was thinking as far as like nonfiction. For sound booth, if it's somehow tied into the fiction stuff that we work on, as well, yeah, that'd be, that'd, cool. be, that'd be amazing. Or some yeah. kind of history of video games, oh, yeah, oh, stuff like that. Because <laughs> I would love to do that because it ties into kind of the genre that we're mostly involved in, which is mm -hmm. lit RPG. So yeah, 
That'd be kind of cool. That would be cool. And I have a booth. I have an actual booth that was constructed. Mm. I volunteer mm-hmm. as tribute for nonfiction. Okay. Narrator. Uh, you you are the first person I'm calling when we have <laughs> nonfiction. Then you pro- then you'll have then you will have to pay a, uh, you will have to pay attention to my performance and then mm. it might mm. suck. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I I will judge the shit out of your performance. If you I know you will. Me. I know you will. I'll give you all sorts of tips, <laughs> and it will all be good natured. Don't worry. Yeah, I, I know. Sure. You, you but yeah, you probably won't be as hard on me as I am on Aurelia. So. Oh well, that's <laughs> that's nice to hear. <laughs> I'm very hard on her. I'm glad you're cr- cracking the whip on her. Good job. She, she thinks it's just her I'm picking on, but it's, it's like no, I'm actually you know I'm I'm kind of hard on everybody. Maybe you a little bit more because you're my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, well, she needs to represent. Yeah, I know. I know. So, okay. Well, I'm I'm drawing a blank on other things to ask you because I, I was going to just have it mostly deal with you know the stuff that we do, and um, I can't think of anything else to ask right now. Okay. Well, <laughs> we can we can sit here and stare stupidly. Yeah, I'm just until trying. You think as, of as soon as I end broadcast. As soon as I or, end broadcast, I'll think of something. Okay. All right. So fake your yourself out. <laughs> fake like, myself pretend, out. Pretend you're pretend you're about like like move your finger 0.2 miles per hour toward the the. Okay. So mouth how button. how long did it take you to decide you actually wanted to become Sound Booth Theater LLC or whatever? No idea. I I mean like you know, it's hard to pinpoint a moment. Um. I don't know, perhaps, perhaps when I was working with Annie. Um, okay. And... She was the first, she was the first additional mm-hmm. narrator that was brought in. I remember. And then after her was, it was Justin, Justin right? Or, or was, no, was Laurie? It would be Laurie. Okay. I think I had been talking to Justin first and we had been making plans and all that okay. first, but Laurie ended up being the first person to actually narrate for sound booth theater besides me so it was right. annie then laurie yeah. then justin but annie didn't do narration yeah no. right until after laurie she was just jumping in and doing the voices yep yeah she told me because i remember when when uh, we finally met last year at dragon con mm-hmm. i was I, I mentioned to her something about how when you told uh when you told us in the beginning that you had approached her and i remember uh, thinking something like, well, because I had no idea the setting. I didn't know, mm. you know like who she was. You just, I knew she was a singer. You'd been to her, her concerts or events or whatever, you know, little singing thing performances that she did. And you had approached her. And I remember thinking, well, wait a second. She might think you're like some crazy fan. And she, t- she told me that she had someone there that was kind of with her at the time that did sort of insert herself between you and her. Mm-hmm. because i don't the, even remember that you don't remember that it must have no. happened so smoothly and it, it was okay because yeah she said i can't even remember the person that she said was with her but she said that that um, a friend or whatever and she the girl did probably think like what is going on with this guy you know and kind of like stepped in but i guess i don't know if you had spoken to annie before you approached i her. mean we 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 had had conversations before. okay I mean, so you I, were like a I, I i i went and saw her shows all the time yeah. Over like, I, I mean, probably a decade before, like, before I I talked to her about Sound Blue Theater. About That's right. You've been seeing her for a good while. My goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, she's actually one of the first bands that my buddy and I, when we were trying to do the video production business, she was she was in a band um, that we interviewed and that we did a video. Oh, thing, that's you know? interesting. That's how I found her. That's how is I found the her. is the video still up on YouTube? I don't know. Probably That'd be not. fun to check out, actually. Probably not. You know where I, I, I have it archived somewhere. Well, you I should totally she upload was, it. She was, uh, she was with a band. Um, it was, oh, man. Jeff Davis's band. Oh, it was a weird play on Thelonious Monk. Um, uh, like. Was it Thelonious? No, it's like um uh, ah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Annie. I'm sorry, Jeff Davis. We'll get it. We'll try, try to remember to get it clarified whenever I talk to her. 
you're going to remember it as soon as we're done. Yeah, with it. Exactly. Uh, I, I'll remember the answer to this question and you'll remember a new question as soon as <laughs> we hang up. That's what will happen. Well, maybe if you remember it when I'm Sir editing. Sir Threadius Mungus. Oh, that's there what, you go. Yeah. Sir Threadius Mungus. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So I, I didn't, I mean, I knew that you had gone to see her stuff already, but didn't realize it traced all the way back to something like that. The oh, video. Yeah. So you were, you were already pretty, you were kind of familiar with her. You, she, you weren't like some complete stranger approach. Yeah. I might've been like 19 or 20 when I first. Well, met I was her. thinking that you would have had to have been in your teens. Yeah. Uh, maybe 20, maybe 20. It, I, I was still in college actually. Oh, okay. I remember we, I was still in co college my friends and I were running this uh, terrible uh, music uh, mm -hmm. review critique website called it was uh, terrible. Nectar Notes. I mean, I I was a dick back then. You so were? I wrote I wrote like really scathing reviews. Oh, did it, you? It was stupid. I hate uh, like I hate thinking back on myself then. So. Oh gosh, um, most but, of us do. I do believe. Yeah, uh, but. <laughs> But you know, it was it was a it was a great attempt, and actually, uh, you know, my buddy Mike was the one who who ran the thing. And, you know, we we thought we were doing something awesome at the time. I'm I'm sure it was cool. I'm sure it was cool to yeah. some extent. Um, but he's actually the one he the guy who ran that. He designed the logo for Nectar Notes. He designed the logo for my band Fiat, and he designed the logo for Sound Booth Theater. Oh, did he? Yeah. It's a cool. You know what I like about the Sound Booth Theater logo in the DB. Mm -hmm. Okay, so not only do they look like um, earbuds, which mm -hmm. you never even, you said you never even thought about that, but they, nope. it was actually, I hadn't either until Matthew looked at it. Yeah, and he yeah, gave yeah. me some, some pointers about it. And he said that, 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 he said, well, the earbuds need such and such. I said, oh yeah, they do look like earbuds. <laughs> but then also when you look at it, it's like DB, you know. For, Decibels, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, they also look like, uh, they could you could view them as uh, like music notes as well. Yep. Yep. So yeah, lots 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 of depth in those two. Logos. Yeah. yeah. Very very proud of that logo. Yeah, it's it's a nice uh, one. Again, Mike, thank you for that. I, yes. I don't know. I don't know if we ever need to change it. It's it looks you know timeless. No, I don't slick. think we should. Mm -mm. It, it's it's it feels. It's nice. your brand. It's your logo. Yeah. Don't don't change it. I mean, you know, like obviously sometimes you do things with the colors and stuff but right right the right. actual logo itself is perfect i like it it's great indeed so. <laughs> anyway okay well here i am drawing another blank <laughs> it's okay the time is yours i know i'm trying to can, do you think of can you think of anything i should ask you <laughs> can i think of any all right you want me to do your job now um let's see i told you i'm a terrible interviewer I got I'm going to talk to Justin. I'm going to do an interview with Justin and an interview with Annie okay. at least. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. You're getting me out of the you're way. You're my guinea practice. pig. Yeah. All right. What to do, what not to do. You're my guinea pig. And, and, and if, uh, it, whenever it gets around to, to the, uh, to the interview with the critical drinker, maybe I'll be a pro by then. Yeah. 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 When, <laughs> when is that scheduled? I don't know. It just, he, when he wrote me back, he said something like maybe in a couple of weeks. So that's sort of like, who knows? Great. That was almost a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I guess we'll I mean, see. All right. Here goes an interview question. How long did it take you to get to seven and a half thousand views or seven and a half thousand subscribers? Oh, I mean, that was so great when you got that explosion of subscribers. It happened. Started, that was crazy. It happened mid-July. Mid-July. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's when it started. So just July, August, September, four, October. So about a little bit more than four months because yeah. when it started, I was just under 300. Mm -hmm. And it was right, the right. Bill Burr, it was the Bill Burr vagina privilege <laughs> reaction mm -hmm. that made things explode. Oh man, vagina yeah. privilege often makes things explode. <laughs> um, oh my thank God. you, it, thank it, you, it, subscribers, it, it, for flooding uh, Sin's <laughs> Sin's channel. Uh, we all really appreciate you guys. Uh, I'm I'm glad that Sin has an outlet and that you guys are listening. This is my outlet, as I said to you before, and I and this is where we were trash talking you when I was talking to Timothy. Mm -hmm. No, we weren't. We totally weren't. I'm playing, but uh, I was I talking about <laughs> I was talking about as I mentioned that working in audiobooks took away my love of listening to audiobooks for pleasure because mm -hmm. it's like when that's all you do all day long, you don't necessarily want to plug into another story. 
Right. But for the first time in like more than a year and a half, because I think the last audiobook I listened to was May of last year. Oh, wow. And that was a Greg Isle, a Greg Isles audiobook narrated by Scott Brick. And I had just had a lot. I, I started listening to Nosferatu when I was in California back in February, but couldn't finish. I just, I just can't. It, it's and it's a fine story, but I'm just like, I, I, I'm not interested. You know, I'd rather, you know, talk about movies and stories and stuff like that. But for research, for the critical drinker, I got his book. And of course, when you buy the Kindle, you can get the audio book for like seven bucks. Yep. So I did that, and I have actually finished my first audiobook my first fiction audiobook in like a year and a half oh wow yeah so i could listen to a story because i want to talk to him about his writing process and everything right right so right. that was exciting but then i started to listen to the sandman and i was like after 10 or 20 seconds like nope i'm just going to go back to true crime podcast <laughs> <laughs> i started listening to it i started listening how to far it. into it did you get I'm like an hour in. It's not bad. Oh, uh, you made it yeah. much farther than so, I did. Okay, so one thing that I'm noticing, and it may be a Neil Gaiman thing and not necessarily a thing that's anything to do with the production. Um, okay. I, it's. I'm finding it difficult to follow from a coherent standpoint. Like, the scene changes so frequently and the character new characters are introduced over and over. It's like, okay, so who's this? Really? Again? What is happening? And be because because they they pull the narrator almost I, probably it's kind of like a graphic of the narration is pulled out. And yeah, and it's more like, like graphic, graphic audio. audio. It's actually yeah. like uh, to be honest, the production is like top notch. Like yeah. it's about as good as audio dramas get the sound. Uh -huh. So the sounds are fantastic the music is great the performances are great yeah it's just that the narrative it, it i i'm having trouble with so the lack it of it because, is because, a problem. Yeah, right right without the narrator they're kind of connecting the dots it's just right. kind of like a bunch of scenes tacked in sequence yeah and i'm having i'm just having a hard time keeping a hold of it and you know maybe if i was paying 100% attention which is something that I have a hard time doing with anything that I'm listening to I'm usually like doing other things yeah. you know um I I I have I have to put 100% into listening if I if I'm going to understand what's happening with that story Well that's um, unfortunate Yeah but I, again I think it's more to do with the writing I I think that the the Dirk Mags I think is the guy who directed and produced it okay. uh, I think he he did a great job at least capturing the atmospheres and everything. It sounds brilliant. It sounds uh -huh. really good. But as far as just being able to follow the story, I, I, I'm having trouble. Oh. Yeah. I, 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 might have, I might even start it over again, though, because it, it is a pleasant experience to listen to. Well, maybe and, if you start it over, it'll kind of click a little bit more. Also, yeah, they said happens. there's a PDF that goes with it. Did you oh, check really? it out? I didn't look yes. at it, no. But I wonder no. what that would be. I had no idea. Yeah. I haven't looked at it either. I just, I, I, because when I started, I think it was today I started because I was like, oh, well, I'm, I'm all done with Ryan Drake number one. Let me find something else. So I went to that and I started playing it. I think I'm just, I was just like, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of graphic audio type stuff. And mm -hmm. I bought the Sandman or I used a credit for the Sandman because I had done a reaction to the trailer and I was really intrigued. And I was like, wow, this has got great reviews and it looks interesting. But honestly, I don't know when or if I'll ever. Okay. All right. It. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a homework assignment. Oh, great. And this I is need to write YouTube, it down. This is for your YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> for my YouTube channel. You and I are both going to listen to Sandman. Okay. And we're going to have a due date. And we're going to have another one of these. Okay. And we're going to discuss it. All right. In detail. We're gonna See, have I like when, I'm, when somebody, you know, it's funny. I'm a rebel. I don't like to be ordered around, but sometimes I like to have some direction. Mm -hmm. So I like this. This is kind of exciting. Maybe yeah. we could even do um, a, a live stream. I've only done one live stream on my channel. I don't mind doing that at all. It's fun That's to awesome. interact with the fans, but I'm a little yeah. timid. Yeah. So uh, all of you Sin fans out there. Um, you, it's this is your homework assignment too. You guys got to listen to it. Yes, listen to it. So right, and about so it. we'll stream 
and then we'll talk we'll say what we want to say and then you guys can come heckle us yes and completely disagree uh that would make the most entertaining stream possible <laughs> come and roast us just be yeah yeah that too possible. yeah you can just you can just throw all sorts of non sequitur uh insults at me too that's um, <laughs> we, we need to get some some fan the theater fan folks too yeah yeah uh, may, okay let's do this let's set a date maybe like close to christmas okay maybe you gotta know. so okay so I don't know if we're not doing anything major on around Christmas time, except I, I am going to go see Wonder Woman on the big screen. When is that? Christmas Day. Oh, okay. It's, it's coming to the big screen, but also HBO Max. So I'm going oh. to, my folks are going up to Jersey. Yeah. So, and, and my daughter and her boyfriend, Javier, will be here. So it's just going to be our little family and my husband, my son, my daughter, her boyfriend. It's just going to be us. So it's like, well, maybe we'll just go to the movies. So that's the only thing, like, we, we don't have anything major happening, except for the continual stuff in my house. Mm -hmm. But do you have, like, I'm going to have to, I'm going to hold you to this. Because okay. you give me a deadline. Okay. Yeah. Totally down. Look, I, I need, I need a reason to, Finish I need it. a reason, uh, uh, yeah, I need a reason to keep going back to it myself. Because, okay. I mean, this is stuff I need to i need to know about well, it's like research right? like the, yeah it, it is re it's literally important research yeah. for this company because right. i need to know where the the highest standard is right i i feel yeah. like this dirk mags guy is probably probably the best audiobook or audio drama producer out there right now um what do you know I, of that he's what else has he worked on that you know of? or are you just saying that because of the quality of of the same um also, the alien. There's an alien one he did. Oh, okay. Um, on Audible, that was fantastic. Um, so you're you're aware of him? Yes, uh, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, right. I listened to that one. Um, there's another one I want to say. No, I, I I can't I can't remember what else he's done, but okay. that that one blew me away, and you know the stuff from Sandman like. If I'm looking at just components, if I'm if I'm looking at just production value and and balance and panning, like all the engineering intricacies, it all sounds magnificent. And it's and it's not it's not cluttered. Um, no offense, graphic audio, but that's one of my that's one of my criticisms of their productions. It it just feels like there's too much um, uh, going yeah. on a lot of the times. Um. Maybe Gosh. that's why I've not been a huge fan of audio dramas is because my only um, exposure has been through graphic audio and I'm just not a huge, all that constant stuff is kind of, it's more distracting than anything. Yeah. But you know, someone on, on the video that I did for the Sandman, because there were several people that showed up to make comments, someone suggested that I shouldn't start off with that, that there was something else I should listen to first. Hmm. And I don't remember what it was. I'd have to go back and see, but that might have been also one reason I hesitated to jump into it before now was because I felt like maybe I would be lost. Hmm. I don't know, but I'm I'm curious to see what that PDF is. Like what the heck it was. You yeah, need to we'll, check out your we'll, account and see too. We'll we'll look at that and we'll comment on that too. Uh, okay, okay, so Alien. Oh, I just saw it. I'm 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 cheating. I'm looking him up on on Audible right now. Um. So he also did an X Files audio drama that I haven't listened oh. to. But it, it was it got a lot of attention when it came out. Uh, Is this the one that Jillian Anderson did? Yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, David oh, I, and Jillian Anderson are in it. I saw um, that mentioned somewhere, and I was intrigued because I like the X Files. Alien Out of the Shadows is the one that I listened to. Okay, and it was it good? It was it was super good. It was super good. What's it about? Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's a long time ago in my brain and it's very popcorn munchy. So the plot really isn't super Not important, it. oh. you know? <laughs> but like, it, it's an alien. It's just another alien. Okay, it's an alien story. movie. All right. All right. I, it's, it's been so long. Well, when you said alien, I thought you meant in the universe of alien. Yeah, it, is. it is. It oh, is. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just more, you know, it's just more of the, it's, more of the same that stuff so i'm going to give you an example of the type of 
not necessarily graphic audio, but the type of audio drama that to me was not a huge turnoff as far as the the effects that you would hear, the ambience and stuff like that. And that mm-hmm. was Death Troopers. Death it was a, it's a Star Wars horror mm. about zombies. Mm. And because Arturo is all into zombies, we listened to that on our drive home from New Jersey like eight years ago. And it was really good because they had the constant ambience of, you know, like, so they're on a spaceship or whatever. So you hear that hum. And then there would be sometimes the occasional scream in the background or the very occasional sound effect of a scraping, whatever. And it wasn't, it was enough to give it this really convincing atmosphere of horror and stuff, but it wasn't so much that it was just a constant barrage of noise that really pulled you out. What was it called again? Death Troopers. So, I mean, it was pretty minimal. I, from what I remember, it was pretty, the, the sound effects were pretty minimal, definitely compared to graphic audio. But I enjoyed it. There is, I, I, I'm, I might want to check that one out. Um, there's another guy who does Star Wars stuff. He did Thrawn, um, which I listened to a bit of, um, and I it was great. Except, yeah, I, I mean... It couldn't hold my attention because Star Wars kind of just just doesn't doesn't hold my attention. But I was, you know, I was listening to it for research. And the guy, the narrator, Mark Thompson is his name. Okay. Oh, my God. He's like he he's he reminds me of me, to be perfectly honest. Oh, really? Just the way he delivers. All of his characters are very convincing and with a completely different affectation. And it's all one guy. And they have all the classic star wars music and sound effects and stuff it is fantastic oh he does all the voices he does all the voices oh so he he's like he's like like you yeah like you is he convincing enough that it sounds like he's got other people doing it oh, like yeah. how oh, your yeah. stuff was yep. or is yep okay Indeed. cool he is he is a marvel i i would love to hang out with that guy and and talk to him about his career i'm surprised um, you haven't tried to yeah, you know, I just I I haven't. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe this year we'll we'll fix that. Maybe he maybe he needs some other work. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I would gladly, I would gladly that would be cool. Employ that guy. That'd be cool. Yeah, it would. Um, but um, yeah. All right. Okay. So so we're doing it. Sandman. Let's. All right. Away. Well, what's going on with you? As far as are you really going to be capable? getting this done by mm-hmm. then and doing this thing by then. I, how yeah, many yeah. hours long is this? Is this eight? Let me see. Okay. It's not that bad. Um, I got the Ryan Drake one done in like maybe a week or a little bit more than a week. So next month, Christmas is on a oh, Friday. 11, 11 hours. Okay. So a little bit long. Okay. So it's not even December yet. Did you want to do it? You said around before Christmas time. Did you want to do it week of Christmas or the week before? Um, That's like only two weeks away. The week. The week before Christmas is only two weeks. Okay. Away. So what's today? Today is the 29th. the 29th. Yeah. We have one more day in November, right? Yes. Tuesday is December 1st. 37, 14. So the 21st is a Monday. Yes. So what about the 18th? Friday the 18th? Or do you want to do do you want to do Friday or Sunday? Maybe maybe Sunday the 20th. What do you think Sunday the 20th? the 20th? Now Arturo will probably be working. That's the only oh, he works okay. he works Thursday through Sunday usually. Okay. I mean, I could always have Hector go pick him up. But okay. but if if I were going to have Hector pick him up for us to do this thing, then Friday's not a good day because he's getting ready for the flea market the next day and he can't really go run off to pick up Arturo. Okay, so why don't we do Sunday then? Sunday the 20th. Okay. And Sunday we'll live 20th. stream it? Okay. All right, cool. All right, so Sunday the 20th. Yeah. Oh boy, okay. pressure is on. Yeah. Oh yeah. gosh. You better listen to that <laughs> audio drama. I will. I will. I got to go read the PDF first and see what the heck that's about. Awesome. All right. <laughs> cool. Okay. 
Well, this has been a really fun interview. Maybe my favorite interview. Oh, Obviously. you're just like, saying no, that. No, seriously, because it's relaxed, you know. And it's just we me. Know each other. It's We're just talking. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't feel I don't feel fidgety and stuff. You know, I, I usually feel fidgety when it comes to interviews because I don't know. Really? I just don't know how to. I just don't know how to hold myself. You know. Right. Yeah. Well, you um, always seem to do fine. I've seen some of your interviews, and you always seem exactly the same as how you are now. But yeah. I get what you mean. You know, it's it. I'm not like a stranger interviewing you or anything yeah. like that. Not that anybody else interviewing you has been a complete stranger, right? What mm, kind of some? Oh, okay, really? So. Yeah, yeah. But uh, another thing, another thing that happens. <laughs> what? Another thing that happens is, you know, sometimes my mouth tends to keep going. Like, I don't know, maybe get myself in trouble a little bit. You know, really? Yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit. When have you know. gotten in trouble from an interview? I, I don't know. Not, not, not. Here's the thing. If you ever get in trouble for doing something in an interview, I don't think you ever really know it until everyone already else knows it. Right. You know, like you're the last one to know. I have never heard you haven't. Nobody's tried to cancel you yet. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe they have. They just suck at it. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> maybe that's it. We'll see. <laughs> hey, I'm looking forward to that day. You know, when when I first when, when, when you're big first enough. Tries, to... Yeah. When yeah, right. When someone first tries to cancel me, because then, like after that first one, that's the that's the real test. You right? know, like, you know that you have got enough people's attention when they try to cancel you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that'll be a great day. Kind of like that's how I look at dislikes on my videos. Sometimes I'm like, I know there's somebody out there just waiting to dislike because as soon as I upload something, sometimes in less time than it takes to watch it, there's a dislike. I mean, there's likes, but there's also di there's likes Good. before people can watch it too. Yeah. But it's just because whatever, you know, but then there's dislikes. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm doing something right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You got to piss somebody off. Piss somebody off if you uh, want to get anything done. Yeah. I know. Exactly. Night life's not complete. until Yeah, cancel you. exactly. All right. So um, thanks so okay. much for yep. inviting Thank me soon. You. Do you mind if I shamelessly plug the company? No, uh, I don't. That's yeah, part of the uh, reason that I brought you on. The reason. All right. So, uh, yeah. All you faithful Sin fans, thank you so much for, for watching this interview. Yes. Um, if you are interested in supporting an independent audiobook and audio drama production um, company that is now that has now become distributors, who is trying to break the mold of um, sticking with the only independent avenue that indie producers have at the moment, ACX, we're trying to get away from them so that we can um, so that we can facilitate our own space so that we can release whatever we want so that we can be artistically free. Um, if, if that sounds good to you, if artists who have the freedom to control their own work and produce what they love, uh, if, if that's a concept that you're interested in and something that you want to support, visit soundbooththeater.com. Yep. Um, we just released our own marketplace. You can listen to our audiobooks streaming on our website at the moment, but the apps are like this far away. Anybody here who deals with who deals with developing apps or deals with people who do develop apps, you know that there is a huge mystery there about how long things take, how hard things are. I feel for anybody who's a coder out there um, because I don't understand any of it and it's just like is it done nope okay <laughs> all right i just i guess it'll be done soon yeah soon okay and that that's that's kind of been the story yeah. lately yeah. but it's coming guys i mean like i paid for it don't worry <laughs> it's, it's it better be coming if you paid for it <laughs> it's all on its way um and uh I, and also you guys will be able to download our audiobooks onto the app uh android's coming first then it's going to be on Apple or iOS. And if you buy something from us, th three books or more from us before the end of the year, and you use the code LAUNCH15, all caps, you'll get 15% off. Yep. And check out their Sambo Theater Live that you have about, what, every week? Every other week. Every two weeks. Every, every other so week. Check out okay. our YouTube, YouTube channel as well. Sound Booth Theater Live. On YouTube, yes. And I'll, I'll, of course, put links to all this in, in the description and everything. Thank so, you. yes. All right. Well. Thank well, you so much, Jeff. Thank you. This was fun.
It was. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and say that's all. That's all, podcast. All right. <laughs> <laughs>